Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting for Random Cast. Me, your host, Imperial Dane, Master of Propaganda, here of like Defender of the Fatherland. Off here to an exciting one versus one on Simwaski Winter. Between the South, you got Donny Chan, fighting for America, freedom. Wow, that was absolutely wrong for the Wehrmacht. Germany, not freedom. So, Reich, taking on the role here, oh, good lord, of the Panzerlehr Panzer Division. That was really embarrassing. In the North, you got Chris. Fighting for America, freedom, and democracy. There we go. Taking on the role of the 3rd Armored Division. Triple Infantry for Cruz with Panzerfaust, Molten Pioneer, Bolton Sail for Donny Chan with an MD42 Grenadier opening. Double Reassence here for Cruz, which, since he doesn't have rifle company, so would indicate he's not going for that one. Obviously, I would just say that would certainly indicate he's planning for it, but it could certainly be recon support, which is you know, a highly likely candidate, though heavy cavalry is also an option. So we'll see here what Cruz ends up with. We got right for the center. We got the German army heading towards the center as well here with the MG42, the pioneers spearheading away here. Trying to wire off the into the church, not climbing on as much luck with that one as he would wish he had. It's a bit happening there, but he's not grabbing a lot of territory. That could definitely give Cruz a small lead over Donny Chan if he's not careful. We got the first gun squad then moving up the western side, so it's probably gonna focus on the northern fuel point rather this one here. And we got the MG42 in the church. Pioneers grabbing the point here, and we got more gunners and weather for Donny Chan so far. The cruise is just swooping ahead, seizing a lot of territory. But we have yet to see a single shot. Fine, fact, you see the cruise quickly fell back there from the point, as he probably felt something was happening there around the center. Doesn't want to run into that. I mean, it's also pretty predictable. The German player will try and stuff a machine gun in there. But there you go, almost got the northern fuel pump. We got rifle moving up on the fire from the Pioneers, the Pioneer. Second gun this court there moving in. Well, the pioneers aren't particularly firing back, except for Ludwig there. The rest can't particularly re reach. Rather than have plenty of clear line of sight to the pioneers, taking them down to half of them. There we go. Jurgen falls first. First blood goes to Chris. Back here, nothing further going on there for him though. As he pushes here for the fuel pump, which is rather exposed. Don't chance to have to, of course, rush up more infantry. And there you go. Gunners being rushed here by the riflemen. He should probably fire as many shots as he can. Gunner this court number two needs to cut support as well. And the pioneers are. Also being rushed in this part, further support, very good here for Donny Chan, but he reasons moving in, they need to get someone into the house tonight to the Americans, or else it could make it difficult to hold it, and there you go, Grenadiers running for it, but the reasons, oh, make it right before the Grenadiers, they got the Pioneers able to sweep away the riflemen, and the Grenadiers were able to focus down the reasons out the house, just popping up front here, they need to be careful not to stick their heads out too far, Grenadiers just retreat as Donny Chan realises they're too weak, Mort on the way then, they send the rifle net, did run into them before too, apparently figured he'd be switching over towards here maybe, I forgot about it, just decided it wasn't. Other way though, Riveman ran into an MG42. Those are the inescapable facts. So we got a third grenade squad up there for Donny, who's aiming here for a lot of infantry versus Cruz, who's hauling up his 81 millimeter millimeter there. Versus they're getting slowly bled out by the Grenadiers and the Pioneers as they just fire through that one window, possibly a bit through the door as well. Almost getting a wipe down the reasons there. Go quickly escaping out through the back door and escaping death at the hands of the German army. Donny Chan there with his mortar, which of course is going to be able to recharge his abilities just a bit faster, meaning its barriers could perhaps be a bit nastier. But there you go. Cruz going to open up down the MD42 inside the church with his own mortar. Blast out those krauts. And down south here, reasons thinking about. Take a big down there for Donny Chan. Got a rifle score sitting out here. Two full teams. Gonna are gonna be able to catch them out in the open. The question is will they be able to hold the back sufficient enough? In this case, one can lose got quickly gets focused down, but the gun is they'll be up being to fire back. Oh, the rifle will be up being to fire back. So that squad's gonna have to retreat. That was just not very good there for Donnie. He has to retreat in fact right now. MD4 tuning up, then it's gonna be under fire from the mortar. He's gonna have to get his mortar on there to be able to press the enemy mortar, at least just force it away. Rifle slightly shifting away in the south deep going to these carrying points here. We got take up there for Donny Chan. And there you go, Mortify on Cruz's mortar, taking out half the mortar team. MD4 to opening as well there. And gets a wipe on the mortar. That's pretty good there for Donny. That is pretty good. Small tactical victory there, but he's losing the northern fuel point here to Cruz's men. That's the third armors. Keeps pushing at the Panzerlehr Panzer Division. More Mortify flying down the house here. Rifling there in a very poor position for being forced out here. By Donny in the mort there is something Donny here could steal and turn against Cruz. That would be a really big headache there for Cruz. The Canadians are panning in a really poor condition. They just assaulted by the rear just took out most of the unit in a matter of seconds. Quite impressive there. And there you go. Mort secured. That is two mortars now. 
for Donny Chan. That is a lot of firepower here, which Cruz will have to contend with, and there's certainly an increased risk than of just suffering wipes out of the blue if he's not paying attention. So that's certainly something he has to be careful with. We've got Lieutenant Sting up for the south there, md 2 though, now covering the northern half of the village here. He's going to not be able to cover the mortar, and that's quick being flanked here by Cruz's lieutenant with the anti aircraft half take off slowly on the way. Need to retreat the mortar crew now. And needs to get more troops in there. We got a bunker up there for Donny. Mortar retreating, but could be too late here. We shall see what ends up with. Donny is heading for the calf point, cutting off Cruz's eastern or southern fuel supply. But the problem is, of course, the northern one is now within Cruz's hands. So, not looking too amazing. And there's also risk of losing the only four Cruz is now cut off from any reinforcements. He's already low on health. So, it's going to be a bit of a trick here for Donny Chan to get out of their life. He could consider here. Well, no, actually not. Yeah, going infantry with the ambush. A sprint ability not give sprint to the MD-42. So, I was about to just be sprint. But in this case, it does work out for Donny Chan. And he's able to escape here with the MD-42. So, good work there. Got the half check on the way there. Sadly, he was not pioneers operating here. Also, he could have laid down telemines. That would have made it a bit harder there for Cruz to drive out his half check where he wanted to. But I imagine Donny is going to be building and like to make a nice company as his mortars are being hauled to the front line once more to blast the Yankees into dust. We can see Cruz here is spearheading with the half check. A bit risky there. In this case, just as risky as the Grenadiers. They're just fighting on his own. And. Donny very quickly hits the retreat key there. A very sensible decision, I'm sure they're going to be agrees with. So right there, Chris is going to be able to pull ahead here of Donny Chan in terms of fuel quite heavily, possibly even decisively. I mean, the only advantage really now going on here for Donny Chan is basically double mortars. That is going to have the potential doing a lot of damage to Chris when sort of bait him into engagement. We can sort of just have both mortars just give it all against Cruz and the 3rd Armoured Division. Of course we can, and if Cruz just decides to play around Matt McNaughton in the centre, Donnie's going to have a really hard time. That we got Donnie needs to you know, fight for one of the few points still. This one is probably the best. Hardest to harass in some ways for Cruz there. Going to be they're getting absolutely hammered by the half-track. Double 50 calibers and a third from the gun. They're just saying for they go double mortars firing at it. Now obviously there's been sort of more realistic simulation of games without probably being hit. The single mortar run falling on top there would just wipe out everybody since there's absolutely no top armor. It does still take a lot of damage from the mortar runs so that end really closely as you can see there. It's obviously not enough for, you know, any actual serious destruction as Cruz wasn't paying attention at all whatsoever. Got the MD-40 being set up to cover the and support the Grenadiers here. Fighting against Raph in the church. The mortar slightly repositioned. They're able to open up then Raph in the church as well. He needs to fall back with the Grenadiers here. The troops reinforcing. Medic bank up. Will he go for Panzer Grenadiers? A pack 40, 2 to 2 to a half track. A lot of decision there, potentially for Donny. The question is, which one does he go with? North here, Pioneers. Almost got the fuel pump, but the 50 calibers definitely make it difficult for them. Laying down a murderous suppressor volley. And Don here in this case opts for the pack 40. The punts are back in on if you're sick. And we got weapon racks on the way there for Donny Chan. Grenadiers versus Rifleman here. That's going to be, I think, a win for the Rifleman. Unless the Grenadiers get a bit lucky with some of their shots because the Rifleman just can push in. Mortars could, I think, be positioned just a bit here versus Cruz. But overall, Cruz is just getting such a field advantage over Donny Chan right now. I mean, he's got most of the map. He's got, almost got both few points again. And Donny Chan's infantry sort of scattered here and then. Yes, he's not able to sort of really exert any serious pressure than Cruz elsewhere. So it's certainly looking a bit rough here for Donny. I mean, the mortars are basically up to support any engagements around the center. The problem is nothing's happening there, so the mortars aren't achieving anything either. So, I mean, the question is, where does Donny Chan want to fight? Because I do think you should position the mortar to be able to support the fighting there, uh, rather than just, you know, just thinking where it's convenient to have the mortars, because if there's nothing going on in the centre, I mean, they're A, going to get rushed, and B, they're going to do nothing until they get rushed. So, 
Best move they got to do on the way there to follow up on the pack 40 help deal with the light vehicles. And not unsurprising since the pack 40 course is rather slow to react to these things. In fact, there's also with the German arm found out, you know, as the war progressed, that the whole pack 40 is an overall anti tank guns as a concept were running into issues because it just couldn't keep up with the pace of the fighting. Plus, they're increasingly running out of stuff to actually hold the anti tank guns with, so they were increasingly just moving towards tank destroyers, assault guns, and well, panzer shrecks to try and deal with armor instead of anti-tank guns. So there you go, two to two out here for Donnie. <clears throat> Bazooka team out there for Chris. And he forced it up to come to the cup. The center, we got Pioneer's going the northern point as well. Fuel point here, almost secure, but he needs to grab the um, connecting point as well there. The cut off point, otherwise he's not going to be getting any fuel out, he's just going to be denied Kurs, who is already taking a hit here for the battalion command post. Kurs does yet to reel in hand on Doctrine, as certainly an option that at this stage, Recon support's probably not even there, I mean he's not even at 5 command points, and he's already able to call in medium tanks, so this one seems less likely, he could go for airborne, can he just run more elite infantry and the like, so of course this could also provide it, there's some other supporting elements, or he could be going for heavy cavalry, calling rangers now, has some more heavy infantry that way to support, Set up for Pershings, maybe combined arms if Cruz is one of the few people on this planet who actually utilizes that ability. Mortisman slightly shifted forward to there to buy a bit better covering fire. And there you go, firing away at the Yankees. Pack 4D, Mark 1 3 position. I mean, it covers them nicely, but there's a fat blind spot here. Wayne from Team Theory could rush it and quickly clear it out. So it's a bit, I think, risky there for Donnie with the positioning there. Just a tad. So the two's going to need some social repairs. A Donny Chance should probably consider some Panzer gun ideas. Maybe we got BAS in the re echelons as well. That's an interesting move there. And there you go. Rifleman being shredded here by the Grenadiers. Then before two support crawls having a bit. Mortifier certainly not assisting on the matter either. And the half tag is a bit slow there to move ahead because he knows there's a pack 40 around there and he does not want to run his half tag into it. And maybe a Panzer fast as well. Whoa, whoa, looks like there's a misclick here, misordering, or just Donnie doesn't care. Hard to say, oh, where the pack 40 got pushed ahead, if there's any sort of troops up by the hanging about, that could have been GG for the pack 40, and we do already have some rifling with a mix of BARs and bazookas. Donnie in there, floating some manpower, again, Panzer gonna be, could be good here. That's a suggestion. Mortify there, dealing some nasty blows to the rifleman. Up north, Pioneer's being pinned down here by the 50 Cavalry. going to need the mortars, I think, to clear that out, or at least the mortar to smoke it and then deal with something else. Also, not increases mortars. Ambulance up forward, sitting at four position in the middle of the bloody road. Perhaps not the best spot. They could maybe consider around here, with a bit more natural cover for it. And going here for another 50 Cavalry machine, and he saves up for a Sherman tank. He, none of his doctrines actually offer any sort of tanks, besides the calling variety. Go, mortars opening up and then machine gun in the house. Back here we got take up for Donnie. Of course, with the severe fuel deficiency Donnie's been suffering. It's going to be some time before I'm calling in tanks, but he's going for some panzer grenadiers, that's going to be good. And in the pinch, can also be upgraded with a panzer strike to help deal with the uh, enemy armor if it really comes down to that. Now, obviously, you shouldn't be doing that willy nilly, but it's more, you know, sort of a ah, shice sort of moment. I have to do this. Fifty cover there, pushed back, but it's not been removed. And there you go. Cruz and the third armor division falling in here with a Sherman tank. Rears they're getting blasted with double light machine guns, quickly falling back there to avoid further death. And there you go. We got a BAR drop, and Cruz hasn't realized it, or he doesn't dare to pick it up. All the way though, Donnie's grenadiers grab a weapon, increasing the overall firepower they can bring to bear versus Cruz. Uh, by a few lengths. And we got Telemantic car flank, there's any vehicle flanks. Not bad. More Telemantic is going to be good. He might want to pop the chats the BAR into the heart instead of the ones with just the light machine gun. Since that essentially two light machine guns and that squawk, which could serve better inside the house, but oh well. Instead, we got a big assault here supported by the half chain. It's a bit difficult here for Don. He's going to just hold on. He's not being any push for the fuel points. So soon, Cruz will have both fuel points again. Of course, they've got all the mortifying hanging about here. 
and an MG42 sort of set up to cover his batteries a bit. Up north, straight into the fifth car there, which you might notice Chris has been shifting about quite a bit. That's making it harder for Donnie to predict where it is. But very good work there by Chris. Very good work. Donnie here can soon begin. But he can actually build a support McCall, though, of course, the thing is, he can't get anything from it right away. And there you go, Pantsman, there's two seats going for the 50 car machine gun, opening up for the Northern Fuel. Sherman moving in, with rifle support into the center, pack opening up, misses, we've got Samex being laid down across here. Second shot from the pack forward, though, hits, penetrates the Sherman, rifle support on the tank, though, are suffering grievous losses, though, the other mortar crew did get taken out, leaving Donnie now with just the American mortar directly under his command. Donnie following up with a second pack 40. Indicating he's either worried about armor or is planning tier 4 or he's planning lightning war. Otherwise, he'd be building up his pawn court just for me to rush out of Stug, but he's going for double pack 40. I mean, again, he's really far behind on fuel. So, I mean, I can understand him going for double pack 40s, but double pack 40s can also mean, you know, he's trying to stall for later stuff. Though, I would say going for tier 4 right now with the current state of his fuel is absolute in. Insanity, you know, the sort of stuff that you can just put you in a straight jacket and lock your way type of insanity. Gun is just these retreat, they're getting obliterated. This is really bad move there by Donnie just punching up his gun. This in front of the Sherman, taking a rather grievous hits. Rear some rumbling push back here and up north, field point secured by the 50 caliber. Donnie is still struggling. He needs, I think, to sort of sh slightly shift his positioning how he works because he's putting too much, I think, emphasis on the center while not enough on the fuel. So he's very much leaving himself, you know, vulnerable to just cruise building up so many tanks and then steamrolling Donnie Chan. And Donnie, or uh, Cruz, I mean, going for grenades here. Mark two frag grenade, which I believe was designed to be able to, you know, helped more easily or something like that. Can't remember even that. I think that was sort of part of the reason for its design. But there you go, Panzer was there using the car provided nicely by the Pioneers, opening up onto Yankees. Most of them providing pressure support. Let's like move up here. Need to fix up the tutorial first. We got the double pack 40s here, but they not particularly covered well with a machine gun. So a few risks there. And there you go, Reason's there, being slaughtered out in the open. As Chris seems to be sitting up here for a flanking attempt. Tenor mine's still about, though. He puts in here back 40s. And Chris is showing not interested in reacting to the northern move there. Oh, there we go. There we go. Donnie still, I should still ultimately though, consider the problem because at least can be in the ready position, but then as soon as he has the resources, again, the push for the suit. In this case, he's going to be able to catch the Germans move northwards. Grenade on the gun, it is almost wiping out the unit 5th car, they should be able to finish it off, or the Rappen will. Oh dear, this could really prove critical here for Donny. He lost the gun, the escort, he lost his 2-2-2, two, two, two. he might even lose his pack 40s here, to Klus. So this is a bit risky, they're a bit hairy for Donny. The South Africa is bringing up from the point, but there's still the half-check support the Lieutenant. Still on the take, in fact we've got more gun here for Donny. He really needs to pull for some Panzers soon. Versus Kuss. And both of them, I think, would benefit from Doctoral Choice in that way, some kind of further late game plan. Kuss here, but I can go for another Sherman soon. In fact, he can go for it right now. And nicely pull for an even bigger tank edge over Donnie. But so far, Kuss is not interested in that, which could perhaps indicate he's planning for heavy carry, which means he's going to be giving Donnie Chan breathing space to maybe sort of get back. And pull up some more anti armor. So, this is a bit risky of what Chris is planning again. He is planning for the heavy cavalry. As for Donnie's base, still no support on the court, still no panzers being shipped forward to the front line. I mean, at the very least, he can probably get away with building a support on court and then rushing out of Stug as his Chris. So, uh, Donnie, I think they need to get something doing. There we got the half tech moving in, pack forwards out in the ice tech, got the raft supporting. Mine spotted, being clapped, cleared out, swept away in fact. This is pretty bad there for Donnie. But there you go, Rappen almost rolled up for the Mortis. Church collapsing, and is being pushed back. Mortis getting wiped by the half track. This is turning into a bit of a disaster there for Donnie. His assault, many ways, was weak. Mine goes off due to Mortifier. 
And he's about to lose his machine as well here. There we go. Wiped out by the Sherman. Almost got the Sherman over the pack 40s, but let losses have none less been inflicted here on Donny Chan. And the Panzer Lair Panzer Division. Back at base, still nothing happening. Still no armor. Still nothing. He's also gone for a lot more extra gun than he is. Oh, just one gun squad. That's one from crewing the mortar there that got dispatched. Lieutenant rushed away, grabbing the fuel point. He's denying it to cruise at this stage, I think is more likely to say. And back here, we got the show being repaired. Could even have sent his rear some to assist with it speeding up the repairs and quickly pushing it back into the fight. Not that he needs it, but it certainly would be sort of an additional detail that Chris could exert. Machine guns, mortar been crude, there you go. Donny here bites the better apple and the upgrades his panzer gun to deal with panzer tracks to help deal with the vehicles and the armor. And he's got a lot of anti tank, but now of course runs the risk of not being able to deal with the infantry uh, sufficiently well enough. In with double mortars, there's only going to be some potential problems there. Raises out close to the mortars, incredibly close grenades off from the machine gun. Smoke screen as well here from the VA slons. And we got rough grenades off from the rifle bunched up and Chris rapidly retreats, avoiding very closely the total annihilation of his infantry squad. Donny Chan is still not building up the support on my core. There's still a Def severe deficit of tanks and there you go Cruz is in fact playing for the recovery he's really giving Donny Chan a chance to push it and there you go he's going for lightning warming he might be playing for a tiger himself that is I feel a bit of a weak idea I mean in some ways it might work even handle the tiger well enough but the problem is it's going to be severely outgunned by the time he calls it in so it is a bit of a high risk maneuver here for Donny Chan and essentially validates Cruz's move to himself, just stall for a heavy tank. Of course, he does have the double pack force and the Panther Strex, so he can lay down some serious fire to sort of, you know, intimidate them, but. There are going to be risks, there are going to be risks, it's not going to be without problems. There you go, Ralph, getting. In a lot of good shots there at the Grenadiers, leaving Donny Chan's front line a bit more depleted infantry wise. You could consider maybe some relief infantry help. And in the north, we got a bigger push. It looks like he's finally going to try and maybe not focus as much in the center. Took him long enough, I would say. He needs to get some of that fuel. Pioneer's being rushed away. Mega sweeping away. Cruises northern forces. Here, reinforcement healing. Got one more to cover in the car front here. Right now, Cruz is in, I think, very strong position here versus Donny. He's got a Rezo's lead. He can soon call in a heavy tank. But Cruz is... Oh, Donny isn't too far behind Cruz in that regard. He's not too far behind. So that, I suppose, is something uh, slightly in Donny's favor. Of course, the thing is, though, Cruz already has one tank out on the field. Again, it's not without its problems. There you go, Pershing called in here for Cruz. Pants are about to get wiped out. That was definitely not the best one, which means that extra anti tank that he does have is gone. So ultimately, the 120 munitions on the Panzer by was pretty much wasted there. That is a rather heavy loss there for Donny. Rather heavy loss. And a tactical burn there for Cruz. So that definitely could have been, uh, I think, executed better. Pershing setting out here. Across the ice. I mean, if something were to happen on the ice right now, we could probably sink it, Donny. But that required knew it was in the ice. That's something nearby to be able to do it. So there you go, M26 person sitting out. Pack 40 from the fire here. Really bad there for Donny, how he keeps moving about his pack folders like that. I mean, there's no infantry screen, no security, meaning essentially they get spotted. They're getting in a lot of trouble because there's nothing to keep the enemy away. And that's basically what happened here for Donny. Like, he just 
keep swinging away, he's moving about as he had tank guns and the well, panzer can lose with panzer fix in not very efficient manners. So that was a real win there for Cruz. Just obliterating both anti tank gun crews, and he's also about to annihilate a lot of grenadiers. I mean, Donnie is moments away from the uh, target tank, but if, if he's handed over both his pack 40s to Cruz, I mean, that target is going to have a hard time. Even with the pack 40s, it's going to have a hard time because there's a Sherman supporting the Pershing. Maybe attack round here should be able to get the Sherman. He gets it, that was a bit tactical unfortunately there for Cruz, but still, that helps Donnie a bit. It's not a massive win, but it's still something here, but he's still lagging behind Cruz quite aggressively. He is super close to the Tiger, but that Tiger's going to have to do some heavy lifting here for Donnie. Some very heavy lifting. There we go, Tiger sent support here, the Panzer Leia, Panzer Division. Gonna lose versus the lieutenant. Tiger moving in, opening up now in the rifleman. <coughs> and he lost all squads. He's just down to two infantry squads. So that's gonna be rather rough there for Donnie Tails. Charge gonna make it hard for him to exert any control of the battlefield. Rifle getting blasted here by the Tiger tank and its machine guns. Down here, mortars firing like on these, ready to go. Pack Forge being sent ahead again. No real infantry screen. Donny Chan does seem to have a really nasty habit of uh, repeating some of his mistakes. Person being pushed back up north. They've got the MD42 coming the air here, but he's just smoked up with the lieutenant. Tiger continues, we need to be careful, he does you know, get hit with anti tank rifle grenades and made an easy target. He's pushing out the pack force, gonna try and get the Pershing there, we go quick volley, takes the Pershing almost down to nothing. But it does escape here. Tiger on the end is also close to death. Need to get his force up the support up north, continue shooting here between the two. He's almost got the lieutenant there pinned down, but he might just be able to grab the point before he gets pinned down. Nope. Chris retreats, he does not risk it here versus Donnie's machine and give air. Goddamn crowds and goddamn guys who's supposed to fix our tanks. They might be crowds too. Oh shut it, Carl. Donnie definitely wants more pioneers to help fix up his tiger tanks and go back in the fight fast. There you go, both mortals are then going to focus down the typical machine gun as fast as possible. Silence it. And there you go. Down to less than half, and in fact, down to nothing in a matter of seconds. There's both mortars, both fetching you two now, just completely obliterated. Two hundred points left here for Donnie. Quick grenade there against the Grenadiers. And full wipe, leaving Donnie with only a single infantry squad. This is uh, turning rather dire there. Pack's pushing back the Pershing. Tiger is still awaiting repairs. In fact, he's moving close to the front and support there while he repairs it. The desperation here is uh, quite clear. I mean, it's only fortunate that Doc Cruz is only first now beginning for anti tank and has brought up any tank destroyers. He's just lost the pack 40 and his tiger's still going to be quite exposed here. Grenades. Oh, white! Double BAR's drop. is what we need to fall back here with the uh, tiger tank. Still pioneers with double BAR's. Will support him a bit there. There's also one rifle squad less here now, meaning uh, it's a bit more equal between the two in terms of uh, infantry, though Donnie is still in desperate need of more troops. Carry the fight. Need to fix up the tiger. Dole Pioneer Squad's there hard at work fixing it up. Pershing's already fixed. That needs to be retreated right now.
before he suffers any needless losses. He might want to consider using uh, relief infantry at the right time to be that way. Just bulk up his lines with us, Torben. At least that way he might be able to exert something, maybe just a something to just draw fire away from his anti-tank guns. At the very least, there you go. More grenadiers for Donny. Very close to relief infantry. Seconds away. Tigers almost good to go. We got right from there. We're moving down the main road. There's strength on the Tiger tank here, taking hit, heavy hits. Mortar retreating as well here. Other more needs to fall back. Further loss of the rifle as the tiger just keeps hanging over main gun and machine gun and leaving Cruiser's men rather depleted. And this Donnie is slowly stabilizing. I definitely think you should consider getting up that support core, then getting up some tanks to support his tiger tank here versus uh, Chris. Chris though might also consider using something of his doctrine besides the Pershing. Rangers could be useful. Combine them so the right time could be really strong. Or even just some of the smoke. Oh, appears right at the tiger. Good work there by Chris using the abilities. Tiger, pack forward here versus the Pershing. Taking it down to almost half health here. Ooh, both bouncing each other's front arm and there you go. And to tank and fast the side arm of the tiger fails to penetrate as well. Bounce again. This time though, at least one American shot penetrates the tiger's armor. Another bounce off the Pershing. Troops are healing, reinforcing for Donny Chan. Need to fix up the tiger there. That has certainly seen better days. Machine gun remains up north. And there you go, Betsy 2 passing. Another shot on the way there for Cruz. Third armor division. Tiger pushing a bit there. Person there getting hammered by the pack forward is the pants up the canon of Fiatic. Kind of oh, lost the pack again for the umpteenth time. Got the fifth couple of running cover for the front line. Kind moving in. Mortar's moving up as well. There you go. Pioneer starting to break on the tiger again. Going to be some time for him to get back. Recent old thing just rushing right past the machine gun. Going straight here for the mortars. Very good work there by Kuz. Very solid prioritization there of targets. Target being rolled down to support again. I mean, Donny Chan is still barely hanging on here versus Curse. Barely hanging on. Nazi hit and Rieslon taking out half the unit. Up north, Lieutenant forced away here by the Tiger tank as well. Sherman out here for Curse. Down here, troops healing, reinforcing. And the pack got destroyed. Got work there by Kirsten Knight. Donny Chan, the ability to finally get us recruited. And that's, you know, the crazy amount of threats this Pershing. Which, of course, is very important. Kirsten, I think, needs to change up his attack tags. He keeps just trying to head, trying to take a take head on to. Donnie doesn't try to flank, doesn't try to launch large attacks, and there's no use of smoke either. Of course, similarly, Donnie Chan is trying to grab the rest of the map. He's too overfocused in the center. It's kind of starting to turn into some kind of Stalin ground, but both are just overly focused on this, you know, city center and just ignoring all of the terrain around it. It's like a double Stalin ground, if you will, rather than just, you know, a one sided Stalin ground. More ponies and weather for Donnie Chan to repair his tiger. Certainly not a bad idea, but a long time you really should consider support more court and then maybe rushing out some stoops to support it. And Cruz might want to consider getting a Jackson to support his Pershing here versus the Tiger. Tiger there, halfway to bit 72. Penetrant hit from the Pershing. He could consider eight trip rounds here for just extra damage. And he goes show him as the pack 40. Smoke shooting on the pack as well. Good work. But not enough just to really cover an assault. In fact, just allow him to get the Sherman away, and he's not using his Doctor of Smoke. Or even combined now to actually boost his Persian here. And hell, we could have had the infantry squad hiding around here to boost his Sherman as well. So, Cruz, I think, is not quite making the full use of Sweden. Got a full retreat here. That might give uh, Donnie Chan here to push ahead if he wants to. Persian the run for the Tiger. Sherman down to half health. Persian takes it from the Tiger, which gains vengeance too. Another penetrate from the Tiger. Penetrant from the Pershing, for the Pershing sending sticky position. Lone help, Tiger's blitzing, Tiger's blitzing, you need to be careful there though, Donnie. 
Gets the Pershing on the abandoned. Ambulance goes down to the pack 40. He's going to think trying to destroy the Pershing. He's going to lose the Tiger unless he can lay down some serious smoke here on Mortar Fire. Pershing though is lit up like a Roman candle. Heavy losses amongst the infantry here from Chris Manning. The northern outskirts of the village. His fourth position is being punished here by both of Donnie's mortars. They've almost got the mid as well. Crusoe still has the arm edge here, but Donnie's been able to push back because he's finally in a rather cataclysmic battle. I think Donnie here will be foolish to try and play for another Tiger. He needs to get up the Supremo Corps Schnell, and he needs to begin pushing for Stooks. Schnell! Getting down some Telemines in the email, though, is not a bad idea, even remotely. It's going to buy him some time because I imagine Chris with all the fuel there might just try and set up for the Tiger or oh, Pershing. Then again, he's suffering heavier manpower losses now versus Donnie, so being able to set up that much manpower might be a bit of a stickier situation. In this regard, the mortars are providing uh, Donnie Chan there with some leverage over the infantry. That way, making it harder for Chris to just beeline for a Pershing. So there are some. Uh, Small amounts of hope here for Donnie, though it is still overlooking pretty rough for the Panzer Leo Panzer Division. Just reinforcing healing. Still in the Sapoma Court. Come on, Donnie, you can do it. Don't play for the Tiger. Don't be a silly sort. MD42 setting up, gonna do hanging back here. 50 cover covering any moves for the car point here. Half track covering the fuel point. Turn to the north here, gonna do opening up with BAR and light machine gun. Shoot, Fritz! Shoot! And the Americans, they're quickly calling in some artillery on the house. Small stonk, if you will, which is the American term for calling it to the Spaniards, also British term, which the Americans still got. I were the artillery called in here. The Americans had a very flexible system for calling in artillery compared to the Germans. That was probably one of the things the Americans did pretty well during the war. And the funny thing is, the Germans acted a similar system back in World War One before they reason completely scrapped it by World War Two. Pioneers in Norfolk's pioneers in here as well. And we got more condition the way there for Donny. Sherman sitting out. With more condition the way there for Donny. Bit of movement up here, but the half take being a bit of a nuisance. Then again, the pack 40 is lighting it up to nine cruise more vehicles. And I do think Donny's just going to try and play for the Tigers in this book. Chris Holt is going to try and play for the Pershing. The Chris, of course, is going to be fast because Donny Chan is keeping his manpower losses in check, whereas Chris is bleeding out. This is, in some ways, it might be easy for Donny Chan to achieve the Tiger Town. This for Chris the Pershing because Donny Chan, just with the double veteran, the three mortars, can lay down a very heavy curtain of death while also slowly burning towards the fuel. Whereas Chris is having a harder time just setting up the manpower because he's constantly being bled out, whereas Donny is playing it in some ways more conservatively, so there's a small chance it might work out for him. Small. Oh, Pani is white. We are dropped again. Light machine guns and rough grenades against the 50 caliber. Almost wiping out of that heavy machine gun crew. In the center, they're trooping push forwards. Mortar needs to fall back. No machine gun flying cover fire. Got, oh, well, the 50 cover actually got smoked out. Good work. And artillery called in as well here by Cruz. I mean, Donnie Chan is particularly making good use of his doctrine abilities. I mean, there's no tactical movement, no relief infantry. So, I mean, that regard, and while I've been criticizing Cruz for not using his doctrine abilities, I do think uh, Donnie Chan also deserves a bit, you know, of uh -uh. get it together, mate. Sort of for that one as well. Yeah, Donny Chan close to the Tiger, but Cruz is actually able to push for the tight Pershing as well there. Being a bit more cautious and not suffering too heavy losses here versus Donny. And there you go. Oh, no, Matt. He just is about to hit the Pershing. Proceeds to reinforce. Giving Donny just a bit more extra moment time there to pull for me for a uh, Tiger tank himself.
The Yabo are not picked up. And there you go. Pushing out for Kluss. Donnie not too far from the Tiger tank. Big two point flies. It's 88 versus Kluss's 264. Grab the Eastern Victory Point over the Grenadiers. Kind of these next to just fall back. Mortifar flying at the Sherman. Moments away from the Tiger Tank yet, moments away. And the South here Persian pursuing a few Grenadiers. They're a bit left on their own without any support. Don't you think so? Let's over tend to just push everything towards just the centre of the map there, leaving the rest of the map open. In fact, Chris was just approaching the other two victory points. He got probably bleed out to Don recently. But there you go. Tiger tank number two arriving there for Donnie right about now. No? No. Apparently not. Donnie is not too quite keen on calling in his tiger tank right now. And there you go, Pesh, right to the pack 40. Tiger big pot, he would be helpful. Going to be just solving it for a few moments. And calling the tiger. Why aren't you doing it, Donnie? Tiger big pot, good. More to the wiped out. Tiger tank finally called in. Pershing stole right in front of the victory. Two pack 40. Almost got the Pershing there. Almost got it. And he gets the Pershing. A huge loss there for Cruz. He should have smoked it. I mean, he just called in a smoke screen on the pack 40 as soon as he saw it. Either with the Sherman or his docks and that pack 40 probably would be able to use target weak point on the Pershing at all but uh, for some reason Cruz thought he could handle it and well he could also taking lots of the most actually losing a lot of infantry and now Donnie Chan's pulling up with the Tiger there's actually a chance you now that Donnie Chan could win this with the Tiger tank as long as he doesn't do anything really silly like Cruz did with his Pershing right then and there oh sending out his Pershing oh shoving onto the ice oh sunk oh dear Consigned to oblivion, a watery grave. Tiger tank rolling ahead there, halfway to veteran to one. Tiger tank shoots. Tiger tank blasting at the end of tank gun. Wiped out. Jackson the way there for Cruz. I think at this stage it's a bit late to call on a tank destroyer. Then again, I mean, if Pack 40 can stop the Pershing, and Jackson should be able to stop the Tiger tank as long as Cruz, of course, hands it correctly. And maybe Donnie Child makes a few mistakes with his Tiger. But that was a really big mistake there with the Pershing. That was a really big one. It's an extent he could easily now avoid it, just using a bit of his doctrinal stuff. But for the reasons, it never seemed to cross Cruz's mind. That's why I've been suffering further loss. In fact, he's fallen so quickly, being bled out. Don Channel has got three machine guns. He's lost one more, but still got the other one there. Betson, three. 20 kills for the fatherland. 20 American souls extinguished. Snuffed out like candles. But Cruz. For all the fuel he's been able to actually cancel Jackson, he calls in a third Pershing. A third Pershing. There's only been some times we've seen any fights that involved so many heavy coaling tanks from both sides, to be honest. That is a lot of big stuff there. A lot of big stuff. Though, of course, in Cruz's case, he's all there to bring up two Shermans alongside the three Pershings, certainly highlighting the fuel advantage Cruz had. Though, perhaps also, he might not have used it very efficiently here versus uh, Donnie Chan. Target tank moving about to get close to Veteran 2 1. Pack 40 is on the way there for Donnie. 
Venus is almost blocked up. Psyche gets, gets a direct hit on the person, but it doesn't penetrate. And we got s -Mods going off here on the calf point and nearly annihilating several reactions, leaving only one man terrified, shocked, alive. Tiger running a bit back there for some quick repairs. He's not going to push it for the Persian here. He's not going to take any chances. I think he's down to 85 versus Cruz 23. So fixing up the Tiger tank there. Small fun fact about the Persian. They actually managed to upgrade one with a bigger gun. I think that was an experimental one. Plus they sort of added, I think, armor plating from t Panthers to it. Just sort of making a super Persian. Obviously there was like only one. Ah, oh, so they did they exist. There's a fun little side note there. Pin lumps in on the way there for the target tank, passing the Norfolk and the tank on the way there for Cruz. So what's Cruz is gonna do here? That's the big question. We've got machine gun covering the northern victory point. Center one is heavily covered here by most of Donnie's forces. His target tank, most of his mortars, machine guns, infantry, you name it. I mean, Chris's chance of getting close to that victory point in the center without a fight is near nil. Damage in the tank, but there's two pack four supporting it. And there's not enough to support the person here, I think. Donnie could build a support McCorn up again, going for some stoops of Panzer Force here versus Cruz. And it would be a shame to, you know, not do anything with that fuel. I mean, hell, in theory, he could get away with just taking for tier 4 and building a Panther now. He wanted to. It would give Dark Cruz, I think, a chance to get back, but he could get away with that. I mean, a Panther and a Tiger going together wouldn't be, I suppose, half bad. I do think he should use the fuel, you know. Get out some armor. Support the tiger properly. All that stuff. Y you can actually, Donnie. You can. You got under 86 to fuel. You got the tech done. The support core itself isn't actually that expensive, so you, you can afford a single tank. Donnie, you can afford a single tank. I mean, I'm not saying that Alma's got an amazing right now, but you can afford a tank. And you could afford two stoops, probably. They're shooting here, Raf and Captain Tank far from the target tank. Shots penetrating though. A lot of s ones going down the center victory point. And Pershing there being caught up after both pack forwards and the Tiger. Also imagine Cruz probably isn't very sympathetic to Donny Chan's fight right now. Almost got the Pershing. There we go. Pershing cooked up. That is the third Pershing now that Cruz has lost in this engagement. I suspect that would be a heavy tank platoon that just went up and smoked there. Rather than almost getting wiped out. So at this point, it's not looking good for Chris. His forces are too depleted, but also just he keeps sticking to the same brute force tactics and handling a very large force. Which is obviously wielding what he's got in a very incorrect manner. So in that regard, he's just sort of further feeding Donny Chan. Thirteen kills. There you go. Returning getting blasted there by the tiger. Oh, you don't move the tiger tank out in the eyes. You don't want to lose like it killed Chris. Ah, oh, no. Get it off, Donny. Get it off. Woo, that was close. That was a really bad move there by uh, Donny. That was a really bad move. Rearson's wiped out. <laughs> he almost took out the entire Rafa score there by breaking the ice. You can just see Carly. Help! I can't swim. I'm from Minnesota. 
Whatever that means. Anyways, GG there, a loss for Kuss. The third armor division has been reported by the Pantalane of April for fighting. Oh, well, I mean, Donnie, though, had a very weak start. He focused too much on the center, not on the fuel. There were some tactical issues here and there. He's meant game showing the old struggle a bit, but he's had to take advantage of the fact that Kuss seemingly just got overconfident, just kept attacking head on, rather than trying to use his numbers and the fact he controlled the rest of the map, just launching, you know, larger enveloping attacks, making it harder for Donnie Chan to focus his firepower. But instead, he allowed Donnie Chan to focus his firepower, just keeping it tanked down, you know, the narrow center. That was really, I think, not very wise for Cruz, and particularly because they didn't use smoke any ability to try to supplement his attack. So there were some definite issues there for Cruz as the fight went on, which allowed Don and Chan, you know, to just absorb a lot of fire and deal a lot of damage to Cruz just hurting him. Particularly because the mortars, I think, proved quite crucial here. They put together the one he stole. That was really, I think, the big win there for Donny Chan long term. Able to just bleed out Cruz. And Cruz never tried to counter the mortars either. Just, you know, they were sort of there, but apparently not a big priority. So there's some definite issues there for Cruz's um operations as he went on there and that sort of really allowed Donald Chan to slowly just to build an edge over here versus Cruz and that way beat him silly but there are a lot of things both sides could have been doing better to be honest so there you go I hope you enjoyed this match I hope you learned something from it if you did one subscribe to your friends share it with everyone if not send in me plan apart some feedback in the comment section and links to videos where you can send them in are in the video description as well where you can also donate or pledge on Patreon you can find links to doing that as well by the way that would be most appreciated it helps me out a ton I'll have to keep doing this which you know do on a daily basis so do consider chipping in a bit but this is Imperial Day signing off and see you all tomorrow for another signing episode bye